Axie Origin is trending on Twitter. Is SLP back? Is it going to go back above a cent? Is play to earn back? The narrative is starting to form. Managers are tweeting stuff like, oh, I'm starting to hear from my old scholars again. People are starting to want those scholarships. So what's going on? Is SLP coming back? Is play to earn alive again? What's going on with Axie Origin? I'm Flux. I'm the community manager for Blockborn. This is my personal channel. Let's talk about blockchain gaming like we usually do. Axie Origin Season Zero is coming. And they are finally rolling out one of the big features that we've been waiting for for a long time. They're rolling out runes and charms being a part of the marketplace. So runes and charms will be NFTs in season zero. In case you don't know, runes and charms are basically the most important items in Axie Origin. They power up individual moves in the case of charms and they power up the Axie itself in the case of runes. And they make a huge difference in the quality of your team. The rarest runes and charms are also the most powerful. And the only way to get these items from the game is to gamble for them by spending SLP as well as I think a currency called Moon Shards, which is a virtual currency. I'm not sure about the Moon Shards in Season Zero. But basically, you spend SLP to spin the wheel and see what you get. So they're kind of implementing a gotcha based system for these runes and charms so let's talk a minute about a few things look if anyone who's watched my channel for a while it's been a while i was i've been doing a lot of different stuff playing different games youtube kind of fell off my radar i was multi-streaming but not paying a ton of attention i really do want to take some time to assess where i'm at with axie i played the alpha season the season before season zero i had a lot of fun the game is fun um, I, I enjoy playing Axie Origin. I want to stream more of it. I want to spend more time on it. I've just been busy with my full-time job and the Lost Relics grind. I do think there's something dangerous in Season Zero that you need to watch out for. I think there's something to be careful of. And that's the nature of the gambling-based sort of like system, the gambling for the runes and charms. Now, you can just buy them on the marketplace, and you never need to actually gamble for them. But someone has to spin in the system where you spend SLP and you get a random result. You need to basically like play the runes and charms slot machine and try to win the jackpot. The only way to initially have any of these exist is for this gotcha style system, similar to Mir 4, similar to Nino Kuni, similar to Genshin Impact, similar to a lot of these free to play mobile MMOs, uh, especially a lot of stuff coming out of the South Korean scene. A lot of the blockchain stuff uses the Clayton blockchain, which is built by a South Korean company. There's a lot of stuff there. I could do a whole video on the South Korean blockchain gaming scene, the sort of gotcha style games that are incorporating blockchain technology and NFTs. I can go on a whole tangent there. I'm going to avoid doing it. What you need to know is this. There's two forms of gambling, right? You have slot machines and you have poker. Slot machines, you're playing against the house. When the casino wins, you lose. If you win, the casino loses. And they have it set up. The odds are in the casino's favor. So over time, you will lose. You will always lose all your money. You're never going to actually profit in the long term. The only people who are able to gamble profitably are people who do like large gambling streams and they're sponsored. And a lot of that stuff gets very sketchy. There's a lot of gray area legality as well as ethically dubious behavior. Um, and there's also some legitimate stuff as well, but generally speaking, you're never making money. You're always losing. And most gambling addiction is around slot machines, not around poker because of the nature of how it sort of psychologically affects you. Same thing applies to things like blackjack, roulette, table games, anything where you play against the house. Now poker is different and wagering in general is different. So when you play poker, you know, you and I are playing against each other and I'm betting against you. You're betting against me. The house is taking a small percentage of each pot, regardless of who wins. So if there's a hundred bucks in the pot and the rake is two and a half percent, then the casino takes $2.50 and the winner of the hand gets $97.50, the rest of the money other than the rake. So the house takes a rake. It's PVP with the house taking a little tiny piece, whereas slot machine is PVE against the house and the house always wins. The key is... Gotcha style games, games like Genshin Impact or Nino Kuni, they implement slot machine style gambling against the house where you pay for the opportunity to get RNG a lot like booster packs. This goes back to Magic the Gathering and baseball cards. This is not a new phenomenon. The, the ethical boundaries of what is and isn't okay as far as these sorts of gambling based systems in games and in collectibles is a 
a vast topic. Most people seem to be okay with some amount of gambling, especially if you're talking off the record, not on video, not on stream. Plenty of people will gamble. They'll play poker. They'll bet on sports. You know, it's, it's a pretty common thing. I'm not here to be anti-gambling. I enjoy gambling. I've played poker my whole life, like since I was 10. My uncle taught me how to play, which is a little messed up maybe, but I, I like it. I learned a lot. I, I, I understand certain things by experiencing poker, RNG, sort of Bayesian reasoning and some, you know, kind of like fancy shit. The point is, Axie's system where you roll for runes and charms is a slot machine. You're paying money for spins to try to get something that is more valuable than the money that you're spending to roll. You're gambling against the house. There's like a hair on my face. It's getting me, like on my, my face, I'm like trying to fix. That's why I keep scratching my face. Um, you know, you're gambling against the house and the house always wins. The problem is someone has to do it. There's no way for runes and charms to be on the marketplace unless someone is gambling for them. What's going to happen is... <laughs> If you are thinking of yourself as investing into blockchain gaming, but what you're doing is putting money into SLP and spinning for runes and charms, you're not investing, you're gambling. You understand? It's bad enough that people use the word investing when they just randomly buy shit in these games. And it's not just Axie. Same thing happens in every single blockchain game I've ever heard of where the uh, NFTs have gameplay significance, whether it's Gods Unchained, whether it's Lost Relics, whether it's Splinterlands, whether it's Million on Mars, like all these games I play. Like, it's not unique to Axie. But, you know, people will be spending 100 bucks on some random shit in the game. You know, there's no investment thesis. It's They don't have enough money to be investing in this category, you know the risk profile, none of that. It's just, I want the item. But then instead of saying they're buying it, people will say, I'm investing in the game. We need to really be careful about this. It's already dubious when you're investing by buying, you know, like a $60 item that may or may not ever have resale value. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like an NFT that gives you a boost in the game or something. Like, that's already bad enough. When you're putting money into a gambling-based system to roll for rare items and you use the word, I'm investing 30 bucks into this, you're not investing, you're gambling. Specifically, you're playing a slot machine style gambling game for those runes and charms. So be careful. Don't gamble and spin for runes and charms with money that you wouldn't spend gambling on a slot machine. At most, you should probably use the marketplace to buy stuff that's affordable. And I know it's boring, but you should think of it as entertainment spending, not investing. Um, that's going to work for the vast majority of people. It's going to help you avoid get scammed. And if you are a high level competitive gamer, that's awesome. That's just sort of its own different thing. But I'm talking about the 99% of people otherwise. Anyway, I just wanted to share a few thoughts. Axie Origin Season 0, I'm excited. It's going to be fun, but it is a gotcha. It has gambling built into the core gameplay loop. Sky Mavis kind of made the deal with the devil, like Robert Johnson back in the 1920s. And uh, so you got to be really careful. Don't get wrecked. Don't spend money you can't afford to use. And don't call gambling investing. All right, let's really, really be careful. Play to earn is the new gotcha. And just like gotcha games, it's dangerous and it's trying to take all your money. So be careful and make sure you don't get sucked into spending money you can't afford to lose. Okay, I think my food just arrived. I ordered lunch. I think it's here. And this is about a good point to end the video anyway. So leave a comment, like the video, subscribe, let me know. I'm trying to do one video a week for now while I get back into trying to get this YouTube channel to not suck again. I know it's sucked for at least a few months. I've seen the stats. I've seen the unfollows. I'm not even emotionally hurt by it. I just, I want to do better because I'm interested in seeing what I can do. So trying to improve the channel. Thank you. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Goodbye. See you in the next video. Peace.